What's up, y'all? My name is Devontae, and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. Yo, just a quick little, I wouldn't necessarily call it a rant, but more of a coming to Jesus moment. Very separate from professional wrestling. You know, I was watching this interview because, like, I've been going down this whole Kendrick and Drake rabbit hole no different than how I went down the same rabbit hole when I was looking at drill music. And I'm not going to talk about this too long, but if you do want to skip forward to the wrestling portion, as always, link is on the description box below. Check it out, though. I was hearing uh, Kendrick Lamar speak from the perspective of, like, as if he was um, uh, interviewing Tupac. Or maybe not interviewing, but giving insight onto what Tupac meant because, you know, Tupac being such an influential person on Kendrick Lamar's life, you know, you fuck with Pac, I fuck with you. Or that's how I look at it. And I wanted to see what Kendrick had to say about it. A bunch of great things. Very articulate young man. I mean, obviously, he's Kendrick Lamar. I don't have to go too deep into, you know, blowing him off or anything like you know this already. But there were some things that I look at. And, you know, obviously, people may disagree with me. I might have a lot of people who disagree with me, but I'm just speaking from my own perspective, things that I never got, because I get a lot of people all the time that say things like I'm Uncle Tom, people who say things like, oh, you know, coon this, coon that. And all I can really do is just like, I mean, I'm still going to think the way I think. You ain't going to change my mind. I mean, that's not really changing my mind. If anything, that's pushing me even harder because I feel like if you have a problem with what I'm doing and I know I'm succeeding in what I'm doing, then I'm just going to keep going stronger and what the fuck I'm doing. You feel me? But there were some things that he was saying from a positive standpoint as far as uplifting black culture or the black community. And I agree with that. But then there are some things about the negative perspectives that I just never agree with. And that's where the things I usually disagree with when it comes to the progressive Afrocentric audience. It's like the positives as far as what you want to do to uplift the black community. This goes to Tupac also. I listen to his lyrics all the time, obviously. I can recite most of Tupac's lyrics. And I always agreed with the positive messaging as far as what he felt we should be doing within the black community but something that always stuck out with me when fucking with Pac was the fact that like he will always contradict it and it's not the fact that his music wasn't great obviously he's Tupac he's the greatest rapper in the history of music one of the greatest musicians of all time a big inspiration on my life overall you know but like I never really understood like the huge shift and trajectory when hearing Tupac's music when in one sentence he'll be talking about uplifting black women and you know he loves his mom this and he loves his mom that but then he'll switch it up and then he'll call women bitches and he'll call his mom a crack baby and you know his mom gave birth to a crack baby that kind of shit and I get it as far as him being real but it still is in conflict with the message that you put out prior. And it's not that I'm saying that's a bad thing. There might be a method to the madness. But I kind of feel like the way Kendrick Lamar talks about the situation in reference to Tupac is very similar to how I look at the black community overall and why I never really understood how you can have one thought process that completely contradicts the other. Like, I remember, I, I can't remember the guy's name to save my soul, but I remember I was talking about... um you know, me being a black man in America and I never really understood like, you know, the perspective of like actual true racism. You know, I had people call me the N-word before and you know what? I turn around and whatever skin color they happen to be, if it's opposite of mine, I'm gonna shoot it back at you. It's just like that, you know, 50-50, you know, give me what you can't get back. It's just that simple. That's how I looked at it growing up. You feel me? Like an eye for or not. Makes the whole world blind, but guess what? We both can't see. So I guess that's just the norm then, right? That's how I look at life. And I always felt like, you know, I grew up just like any other person, you know, who grew up in the hood. I grew up on WIC. I grew up on Section 8 housing. I grew up in HUD. You know, all that shit. My mom's single parent, single black woman, raising three kids. I've been through the same shit that most people been through. But I decided to graduate high school. I went to the military. I got a nine to five. And I'm taking care of my family. Lower middle school. I'm lower middle class. Just like the average American. You know what I mean? Like, bro, I make like 70000 every year. 65,000 actually every year when you take out taxes honestly 65,000 every year that's my that's my income for the most part lower middle class and you know it, it's it's just crazy how I see so many people say things like in particular black people when they say things like oh we can't we can't we're being held back by this we're being held back that and I just don't I, it, it frustrates me because I don't want to stand like you say that you can't do this and you say you can't do that and that everybody's against you and like you deserve reparations this and you, you deserve reparations that and it's just like but on the flip side you call me a moron when you say that i go do my nine to five when i should be smart and i should be mooching off the government right i had someone tell me that off rip oh well you shitting on food stamps you shitting on this you shitting on that you know like 
well, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to get that and you can go work your nine to five. I've been told that plenty of times. So I don't understand how is it can it be at one point like we want reparations and this and that and that America hates us and this and that when in reality, black people and I mean, everybody takes advantage of the government because it is it's reparations in the end of the day when you think about it. Right. Everybody takes advantage of it in the end of the day. And I just never understood the whole reparation argument to begin with, because it's like I can understand people who actually went through the situation, getting what they want to get back. But you didn't go through anything. And if you can prove something as far as a link is considered tying you back to a situation where you feel that fucked up your entire lineage, then, yeah, you owe that, too. But not every black person is in that position. I probably argue that less than what, maybe one percent of black people are in that legitimate position. Yet everybody's going for that same perspective. Nine times out of ten, you got black people who have ancestors from fucking Europe trying to talk about I want fucking reparations. Like, how is that? How does that work, bro? I never understood that perspective at all. I just always felt like you got a nine to five, you go do your thing, you don't fuck with nobody, no one fucks with you. Look, I don't fuck with the police just as much as the average black person fucks with the police. But the difference between me and the average black person is that I want reform. You know, I want policemen to be held accountable for their actions. You know, I want better training so they can take care of the community a lot easier and a lot better. What I don't want is for them to be fucking demolished. What I don't want is for them to be taken out of the community so you can go to fucking Walmart and steal whatever TV you want to steal. I don't know, man. I just I just never understood this perspective. I know I'll probably get a lot of shit. And don't expect me to go in the comments arguing with you because nothing's really going to happen as far as us going back and forth. You're going to feel the way you feel. I'm going to feel the way, the way I feel. I just always looked at that and I just said to myself, man, is that really a black person way of thinking? I don't know, man. I, I don't think that's a black way of thinking. I just think that's a common sense way of thinking. You know, you get yours. I get mine. We both fine. We stay in line. I don't know. That's just me. But a little small man. With that being said, let's get into the wrestling. All right. So I'll make this quick because it looks like they're going to do the whole Kenny Omega important announcement coming up next. So while it's on the commercial really quick, uh, Jungle Boy just cut a promo. They did a whole recap of what happened last week when, you know, the elite beat the crap out of Kenny Omega. And, you know, <sighs> I, I'm going to give it a chance. I'm still going to keep continuing with what they're going to do. But, man, it is so hard to take this seriously with Jack Perry in that spot, bro. I just can't take Jack Perry seriously. I, I'm trying my best. I'm trying to dispel di I'm trying to dispel disbelief, right? I'm trying to pretend as if what I'm watching right now can actually happen in real life with a guy the size of a fucking Jack Perry with the intimidation skills that equal about negative zero of a fucking Jack Perry. But it, it's, it's really hard. It's, it's very hard very very hard i can only imagine how people felt when Shawn michaels or bret hart bulked up and acted like this when they were angry with guys like ultimate warrior and randy savage and hulk hogan running around now you want me to pretend the jack perry half those guys his size you want me to pretend as if he's a fucking serious threat to fucking anybody and then everybody else the participants involved in this you really want me to take this seriously you know what again we'll wait to see what kenny omega is going to say and i'll wait throughout the rest of the night because they did pull up in their tony khan's little parking spot and i, I guess this is a ongoing <coughs> damn ongoing angle I'll, I'll, I'll wait i'll i'll hold judgment right i'm gonna give them a chance still what i won't give a chance though is no more of this orange cassidy tremperetta bullshit everything about this match is what's wrong professional wrestling everything about this match is a perfect symbol a symbolizer of what the fuck is wrong with aew one why the fuck is this match happening on normal television why is this on tv why why they have a fucking feud going on at the moment what to have a bl what the blow is gonna be a fucking gimmick match at the pay-per-view is that the case why do that you're already gonna have a gimmick match later on tonight that in itself is gonna undercut the pay-per-view coming up in a few weeks at double or nothing you shouldn't be having any kind of special stipulation matches that's closely gonna resemble what the fuck you're gonna do with orange cassidy and trent Beretta coming up on sunday in three more weeks it makes no sense it's just idiotic as far as why would you book it in that way and then to make matters much worse you have orange orange cassidy beat trent Beretta. not to say that orange cassidy shouldn't beat a trent Beretta if you look at orange cassidy's resume versus a trent Beretta, but it's still just ridiculous to me that you're just gonna fucking kill the feud like that essentially that's what you're doing why the fuck should uh, trent Beretta get a rematch what would be the point you better have a good story in place to make a, a 
a reasonable excuse as to why Orange Cassie and Trent Beretta should go at it some more because this little post match shit, this ain't gonna cut it. This was stupid. This was dumb. This was ridiculous. You mean to tell me after all the abuse Orange Cassidy took, right? You mean to tell me this dude got power driver on top of some fucking stairs, right? The same move that Shawn Michaels gave to Undertaker in the Hell in a Cell. The same move that fucked up uh, John Cena's head in his match against uh, Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania. It was already bad when he knows so, but you mean to tell me I'm supposed to buy this bullshit right here? Here, let me see what Kenny Omega is saying. Rocky Romero has to be the biggest retard I think I've ever seen in my fucking life from a character standpoint. Before we go about the most, because after the Kenny Omega stuff, the ball kept rolling. Right now, we're about to have Mariah May in competition, so it gives me time to talk about the stuff that's happened so far. So, as I just said, Rocky Romero, you're a fucking retard. This dude goes into the trainer room with Orange Cassidy sitting there with an ice pack on his neck, and he's telling them, hey... I know you just had your match with Tramperetta, and that match definitely should have happened on pay-per-view. I don't give a fuck if it's just a lower mid-card championship match or a lower card feud or whatever the fuck you want to call it. It should have happened on pay-per-view just given how personal this is. But instead, we're going to have this blow-off, and we're going to do a trios match at the pay-per-view coming up at Dynamite. If I beat Jay whoever, Jay White, I guess? Who cares? My point being is, though, he said, hey, maybe we can get a match with, you know, a person of our choosing against Jay White and the fucking guns. It could be me me and you and Ishii? It could be me, you and Shibata? Hell, maybe me, you and Trent Beretta. Nigga, what the fuck? Did you not just watch what the hell we just watched right now? What the fuck are you talking about? Dude just damn near trying to end his career and you're saying we should get a trios match with this guy that who just tried to fucking break your neck. Oh boy, oh boy. Speaking of that real quick, reverting all the way back to the first part, I kind of, kind of, I, I kind of, kind of, I kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of cut myself off right there for a minute. What I was going to say was, the fact why I thought Shrimp Beretta and Orange Cassidy, was Orange Cassidy was fucking stupid, after that power driver on the stairs, he actually did like a little guillotine on the um, outside of the ring to like the little ring post shit that they, like the little ring apron, but underneath the beams, they did that spot, right? So he power drive them on the steps. This is Shrimp Beretta to Orange Cassidy. He hit him with a guillotine on the ring beams underneath the ring on the outside of the ring. And then just inexplicably, he went to go get a fucking toolbox. And Orange Cassidy, he no sells the whole time. I don't give a fuck what people are. He held his neck. Shut the fuck up. He got power drive on steps and he got hit in the fucking throat with the ring apron on the bottom. How the fuck is this dude surviving everything? This is the problem with an Orange Cassidy. For a guy to be so small, he's way too durable. Like, this makes no sense. How is it? guy this small this week when you look at his composition as far as his body is considered you're gonna sit here and tell me that orange cassidy could take all this fucking abuse this is the story of an orange cassidy why no one can necessarily get behind him he's a goofy fucking gimmick who's about as fucking durable about as fucking he has about his heart is about as big as fucking john cena's this dude's resiliency level it's like level 10 i mean the bar on the wrestling game if you were fucking with orange cassidy i guess it's just glitch and half the bar is fucking resiliency on every goddamn move that he does give me a fuck Fucking break. It's ludicrous to think someone can actually sustain all of this and just no sell the fuck out of it. Call him Super Cassidy at this fucking point. But continuing on though, Kenny Omega said that apparently it's going to be an anarchy in the rules, uh, anarchy in the arena match with the Elite versus FTR and two partners of their choosing, I'm assuming, coming out later on tonight. It's going to be dumb. It's going to be goofy. Lots of stupid fucking sparks. This is how you're going to actually promote the Elite. Hmm? You're not going to do anything with Jack Perry, maybe in singles action to maybe help. You know what? Whatever, whatever, whatever. I think it's dumb. You're going to have two, what, disqualification matches, I presume. You're going to have a no disqualification match tonight with Edge and Brody King in the main event. And then you're going to turn around three weeks later and then do a no, an a, a ultimate no disqualification match with Anarchy in the arena. It's so dumb. And I know this is like an annual thing at this point for double or nothing, but it's just so fucking dumb. And I don't fucking get it at all. It's so stupid. So many ways you could have went about promoting this because, you know, this is the biggest angle in the company currently at the moment. And maybe I'd be OK with this if Swerve Strickland somehow got involved in this and maybe if that happens to be the case like he's gonna pull a double duty i'll be okay with this like a like a Seth Rollins for an example but i don't think that's gonna be the case and this whole thing is gonna fall flat on his face because you don't have the world champion involved in this at all it's so fucking dumb it makes no sense whatsoever but then we continue on with the um actually i will say this i actually did like this a little tiny bit we had an interview well actually i liked it and i hated it let, let, let me explain so we had serena deep right it was her coming out to talk about her survival of her three seizures and why she's not gonna 
going to fight for the Women's World Championship and why she's proud to be in this position. Just a stereotypical babyface promo. Of course, you have the degenerate AEW fans. After hearing that she had a seizure, they're yelling all random kind of shit. They're chanting for Tony Storm. And I get it. In the end of the day, you pay for a ticket. But she legitimately had a seizure. You dumb fucks. I would think maybe show a little bit of respect for a person who damn near died in real life. Maybe just a teensy weensy bit of respect. I don't know. I, maybe I'm giving too much trust in the wrestling fans to have that kind of fucking respect. I don't know. Call me fucking crazy. I paid for a ticket to be a dickhead. Go for it, I guess. Who am I to stop you? Tony Storm comes out, though. And she plays the role of fucking retarded degenerate wrestling fan A. And she says, I don't give a shit about anything that you went through. I expect that from Tony Storm. She's what we call in professional wrestling a hill. I know you barely see that nowadays, but she played her role to the T, right? Although it doesn't matter because it seems like the degenerate hill wrestling fans by nature are going to side with her regardless of the hearing that a woman damn near died from her three street from having three seizures directly one seizure two seizures three seizures oh hey right no 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 okay fine whatever 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 it was a good promo nonetheless i did hate the fact that they had to go blue and you swearing throughout the fucking promo because totally you can't do that on your own without having to be a little bit creative right just a little bit of creative you could have said something other than shit but of course we have to use that in order to put emphasis on the few that no one necessarily gives a shit about i like serenity but let's just be perfectly honest with ourselves no one gives a fuck about this match no one gives a fuck about this feud in fact as i talked about last week it feels like mercedes monet and uh what's the girl name again willow nightingale i whip my hair back and forth it feels like that their feud has a little bit more priority over this feud even though this feud is the mid card channel and that championship has to be the world championship and nothing makes sense because it's aew and it's not supposed to make any sense also, did I mention that Edge is going to challenge Brody King to the main event for a no disqualification match? I feel like I didn't talk about that. Did I talk about that? I did. Maybe I did. I don't know. Did I reference it? Probably not. Who cares? You understand what I'm going to with it. You understand. You get it. We're all caught up. Okay, good. Continuing on. I'm not fucking reviewing this Mariah May match because I got to go pump gas in my car. And also, I have a penis and I need to go use it right now while looking at Mariah May's ass. Okay, we're good. Continuing on. All right. While well, we have this pointless ass match with Jay Briscoe, Jay fucking Uso, Jay, whatever his fucking name is, Jay black i don't fucking care let's talk about this stuff and we're gonna talk over this match because there's a bunch of shit to cover real quick so first and foremost let me just reiterate one more time that uh swerve strickland is your world heavyweight champion i know you forgot too right let me also give you a little bit of a reminder that uh uh i know it's crazy but willow nightingale is the secondary world champion as far as in comparison to the women's championship I know it may be confusing because she's going up against one of the biggest women wrestlers in the world and she just had a ridiculously stupid fucking unnecessary match with Sky Blue and literally like she, she literally did every single fucking thing that I assume is going to be coming up at the fucking Anarchy in the Arena match that I'm assuming they're going to do half of that shit in the Edge and Brody King match. This, 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 it just it just infuriates me i don't i don't get their priorities their priorities is so fucking out of whack now again let me let me just say i don't have a problem against willow nightingale as a matter of fact if you were to tell me so far in 2024 who honestly might be the breakout superstar of the year in regards to the women if she keeps up the momentum, I might give it to Willow Nightingale. I actually like Willow Nightingale. The more and more I see her, her promos, the way she carries herself in the ring, I don't hate Willow Nightingale. I'm probably sure I, I hate her personally as far as her politics are considered, but it doesn't change the fact that I don't hate Willow Nightingale. I think she's actually pretty damn good. But I just want to remind you again that with all the emphasis being put on her and Mercedes going in at double or nothing, that she is supposedly supposed to be the Intercontinental Champion version of whatever title she's holding at the moment versus the World Champion. You have Serena Deeb going up against Tony Storm, and you have fucking Mercedes Monet going up against Willow Nightingale. None of this makes any sense. And she cut a hell of a promo. I like the promo. Again, I look at the match that her and Sky Blue had last week. And I think it's absolutely fucking stupid. Everything about it was fucking retarded. No one's going to remember that match. Why did you have a match like that? Why did you undercut the match in the main event tonight with the main event superstars? Why did you undercut your anarchy in the arena match to mean absolutely nothing when you're going to probably do the same exact fucking spots? You had Sky Blue. Let me say this. You had Sky Blue in a match that involved thumbtacks. And which, by the way, I didn't watch the match, but it seemed like they continued after the thumbtack spot because the finish was barbed wire on a board on top of a fucking table. What is going on in this company? 
What the actual fuck? What is wrong with Tony? What is wrong with these people? This is not professional wrestling. You're legitimately just doing exhibition matches. You're like me when I come home from school and I'm done with my homework because I finished it early and I decide, hey, well, I gotta get, I guess some time to kill before I have to go outside and wait for my friends to finish their homework. Let me just pop in an old SmackDown 2, know your role, and I'll just play a random match. Hmm, I guess I'll pick Scotty Tuhati versus fucking Kane and we can have a hardcore match. Let me throw him into a car and let him get ran over. I that's the fucking mindset that's going into this who booked this show what the fuck was the logic in regards to booking willow nightingale and sky blue let me say this one word sky blue sky 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 fucking blue took a thumbtack spock she took a thumbtack spock and she continued the fucking match it was already bad enough that i had a problem with thunder with thunder rose and thunder rosa and Britt baker getting all these accolades of doing the same shit that the wrestlers the, the male wrestlers were doing and people blew that completely out of proportion oh greatest women match of all time because they did spots with weapons check off then you do this then you do this you do this you do what the fuck is going on bro but it, it, it continues. It gets even more wilder. Because like I said, there was a segment before this promo with Willow, with Willow Nightingale where we had Swerve Strickland out there cutting the promo in the middle of the card with the world championship belt. Not in the opener. Not in the main event. In the middle of a card. It was a pretty decent big angle too. Again, these these things are these guys know what they're doing so far so good as far as the guys and their tools it's just the booking flow makes absolutely no sense and the booking in general is so fucking illogical and i can't wrap my mind as to what the fuck is this guy doing it makes absolutely no sense you're undercutting your own talent you're undercutting the priorities of your belts you're undercutting everybody in regards to what their positions are supposed to be played Fucking Christ! It's like you guys ever heard that song full clip? Do you wanna mess with this? Gangsta, one of the best yet. There was a lyric in that part of the song where it goes, play your position, small soldier. You know what that means? Willow Nightingale should not be in the position where she's in right now, taking priority over your women's champion. That should be Mercedes Monet going up against Tony Storm, and you should take Serena D, but she should be going up against Willow Nightingale. And you should take Sky Blue and put her in some porno where we can go jack off in peace with her. Not putting her in a match with fucking Nyla Rose and having her go out there and do Nyla Rose things with Nyla Rose minds. Oh, do you this Willow Nightingale? I can't tell the difference! But back to worse, back to Swords Strickland real quick. He comes out, right? You have the Young Bucks. They're playing up their heel role. Good luck, Swerve Strickland. You're going up to the ring. We love you. Swerve, you're so awesome. Okay, let's go back to seeing racist things about Swerve while the camera cuts away from us. I see you. I see you. Definitely you too, Nick. I see you, bro. I see you. I know a couple of motherfuckers up there in North Carolina named Nick too. They wear hoodies. I see you, bro. Regardless, though, they go out to the ring. Swerve Strickland, that is. He cuts a promo. He talks about Christian taking a lock of his braids. He's like, Christian, come do it to me right now, bro. I want to see you right now, bro. I'm angry. And Christian, you made me angry. So how about you come out to the ring and do your thing? You dig a ling. And Christian comes out, right? And what's the first thing Christian does? Because he's a hill. He shits on the fucking audience's sports team. Edge and Christian, they've been getting cheap heat since the year 1999. Why? I stop here really the year 2000 i guess they were phases in 1989 they were with gang girls so let's go with the year 2000 the year 2000 continue you one we gotta stay consistent here on this fucking channel huh, regardless though christian he shits on the hockey team of the year oilers whatever the fucking names are i mean they're just copying off of america's football team the oilers are the oilers still the thing i don't think the tennessee oilers are one we're, we're not I'm pretty dating myself here who cares i don't watch football anyways i'm a fucking guy regardless though christian he cuts a promo talking about hey swerve how about i do some racist things to you by taking out your lock and i'm gonna go after your gold teeth and then afterwards i might take your food stamps out of your working boots because no god knows you'll never find those there because in order to find your food stamps in your working boots that means you have to actually work meaning you have to put those boots on so let me starve you for a second and swerve was like come on boy you want to take my gold tooth out to come take my gold tooth out arg matey come take out my fucking what is it called? A gingivitis? No, what is it called? Scurvy. Take out my scurvy, okay? I got a bunch of scurvy right here. Come take it out. And then Christian is coming out to the ring with the rest of his coalition family. I forgot their name still. And then, you know, Sword Circle's like, I didn't come along. Come out. Come out. Wherever you are. We got Brian Cage coming out with this. My name is Brian. I lose to girls. Cage looking head ass. And then you got these two guys coming out here looking like a glorified bloodline angle. They all come out. They stand side by side with Swerve Strickland. 
Sora Strickland tries Christian. He tells him to get in the ring, come try it. We're not even blah 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 blah. He says some slick shit to Christian. Christian, because he was, I think he says something in reference to the Drake and Kendrick Lamar beef, because of course, why not? It's 2024 and that shit is trending like fucking crazy. Everybody in any type of fucking uh, side of the world, whatever you're doing creatively, whether you're a content creator, whatever, we're taking advantage of that fucking Kendrick Lamar and Drake beef in some shape or form. Whether it's me doing it as far as thumbnails are considered, or whether it's some porno guys making themselves look like Drake and Kendrick Lamar having gay butt sex. I didn't say I watched that, I promise you. I'm just saying, most likely that occurred regardless though after all that shit started going back and forth out of nowhere tonga loa and kamosha what's his name tonga loa and uh tama tonga they beat the crap out of swerve strickland brian i love to get hit by women with integrity kicks and job into them cage he also joins in on the attack and they start beating the crap out of swerve strickland and christian is there and he's like give him a left give him a right give him an uppercut right there to the chin boy oh mm, i'm seeing you <sighs> and then they power bomb through the announcement table. Again, solid fucking angle. The only problem with this is the fact that it happened in the middle of the car. It didn't happen in the fucking main event or even the opener because Tony Khan is a dumb fuck. Leave it up to him to want to fucking ruin everything about professional wrestling. I know, Devonta, you're, you're exaggerating. Devonta, calm down for a second. Calm down for a second. I'll calm down when my ball sack gets finished sucked on by your fucking mom's throat, bitch ass nigga. But like I said, everything about this show so far, as far as the actual angles in themselves, aren't really half bad. Aside from that opener, that was fucking terrible with Orange Cassidy, because Orange Cassidy is fucking terrible. Not really, really Tramperetta. They're all fucking terrible. But it'd be so much better if you knew how to book the match flow of the card. Can you imagine having a WrestleMania and then you put Undertaker and Brock Lesnar in the opener and then the main event happens to be Takamichi Noku versus Brian Christopher for the Cruiserweight Championship? I feel like that's how Tony Khan will book his fucking shows going forward. Let's put Brock and Taker in the opener for WrestleMania and let's fucking put Takamichi Noku and Brian Christopher in the main event. Makes no sense, right? Because it kills the flow of the show. I know. Logic. None of us have it. Especially Tony. Continuing on. God damn, bro. I forget sometimes because Jericho has sucked so hard in the past couple of years, bro. But man, I swear, when Jericho is good, Jericho, there's a reason why he's my favorite wrestler of all time. There's a reason why Jericho is the reason why I watch. Here's 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 the reason why I watch wrestling. I got to say, bro, like, when he's on it, he's he's fucking on it, bro. He is fucking on it. Before we talk about this, though, reverting back real quick. Uh, what's his name again? Um, Jay Uso. He ended up winning the match against Rocky Barbo or whatever the fuck his name is. But I will notice though. I meant to talk about this too. Pac ended up coming out, or shall I say, uh, Pac Rollins? What the fuck is that hairstyle, bro? Holy shit! I mean, seriously, it's like he just went directly into Seth Rollins's uh closet or something and he decided to wear one of his fucking wigs did you guys see Seth Rollins in that little picture with Becky Lynch and that little derby shit still no confirmation as to whether or not he cut off his hair or maybe they did confirm it regardless I don't give a shit you can tell me in the comment section still not gonna give a shit though but you can tell me did I mention I'm not gonna give a shit though so it looks like there's the path that they're gonna go into is gonna be Dev Triangle Ray Phoenix and Petra Zero let go of my ego and uh, Pac taking on um, these goobers right here. So cool, good job. But let's get to something a little bit more funner, a little bit more important and something that doesn't suck as hard. Jericho comes out with Big Bill, Wild Bill, Hiccup, as I like to call him, and a tag team match against two of the greatest jobbers in the history of jobbers. Dare I say actual legends of legendary legendary. Uh, I forgot their names, but we're gonna call them Black Guy and White Guy. They had a tag team match against Black Guy and White Guy, and essentially it was a glorified handicap match with Bill going out there and beating the dog shit out of both Black Guy. Uh, the, but I will say, Black Guy, he did his Black Guy things. And White Guy, oh boy, he gave it a White Guy, fucking push him, shove him, and gosh darn it, did he try his best. But Black Guy and White Guy, unfortunately, fell to the foot of Wild Bill Hiccup. Rest in peace to the legendary White Guy, Black Guy. By the way, black guy in Canada. Holy shit, didn't see that coming. Well, I mean, Drake does live there, but I'm still concerned whether or not he's black. Actually, that guy that shot that woman in the foot. What's her name again? Oh, it was in uh, Tori Amos and uh, what was her name? Um, uh, something about a horse. I think he shot a horse in the foot or some shit. He's black and he's also from Canada. I learned that the other day. I am smart. Regardless, though, afterwards, Jericho went full WCW 1998 again. Full delusion. 
Yeah, but I will say Tony Schiavone came in the ring. I am kind of disappointed he didn't come Skivani, but that's okay. Hopefully we can get to the point where Jericho really goes full on 98. He's already like 95% there, but you're not full 100% Jericho 98 until he calls him Skivani, right? But I'm cool with this. Look, if Jericho's going to be this delusional, he's going to be this comedic, he's going to be this awesome, I'm all for it. I fucking love this Jericho. I've always been a big fan of this type of Jericho. Now, granted, obviously, it's not Y2J Jericho. That's the best Jericho of all. Y2J Intercon no champion 2000 2001 jericho is one of the greatest wrestlers of all time okay but at the same time this jericho right here delusional 98 99 wcw ralph is jericho it's right there directly underneath y2j jericho okay so i can damn sure fuck with this my only thing is though who's gonna else come underneath the learning tree don't go fucking you know the stupid direction that he went into when he had the fucking circle or the inner circle or whatever or, or he had the fucking terrible fucking jericho appreciation society shit no just go full on ralph is bro you got Wild Bill Hiccup there as a as a um as a bodyguard. Let's get some security guards involved in all this. Let's get let's go come on let's go full Ralph is bro. I'm saying if Jericho's gonna be this delusional, if he's gonna be this fucking crazy, let's just do it. Go full on WCW. I'm cool with that. I'm absolutely outright. That is awesome. More of this Jericho. This is the best shit that's happened on AEW so far tonight. Some may say that's kind of. It's kind of grasping at straws, but honestly, this was actually good, like, for its own merit. Again, Jericho's a legend. Jericho's awesome. I'm happy he's actually in a position where I give a shit again, because it kind of felt bad for the past couple of years, having your favorite wrestler of all time deteriorate in front of your very eyes. So good for you, Jericho. Keep being you, and uh, don't be in locker rooms with girls by yourself. All right, let's continue on with the show. Edge of Brody King, about to go right at it right about now. Holy shit, what a disappointing fucking finish. What the fuck? fuck is this ending uh, you literally undercut everything swerve strickland has tried to build up for himself to become the world champion for this bullshit right here anarchy in the arena with your fucking i thought they were gonna reveal someone fucking special they brought in i, I don't hate brian Danielson. i don't hate brian Danielson. but you mean to tell me all the build up for Swerve Strickland to be undercut. I'm presuming he's going to be the fucking main. It's a, it's, it's a no win situation. Either either uh, Swerve Strickland ends up being the main event, going up for double or nothing, but no one gives a shit because people care more about the fucking elite and their failed ass angle so far that they have yet to capitalize after all the stuff that they did last week. Or he's going to be where it fucking belongs technically, considering that, again, they're the biggest angle currently at the moment. Bro, this is so dumb, bro. And you know this is all just to build up. Not just for Anarchy in the Arena. You know this is all just to be tempted to build up for that Blood and Guts match. It's going to probably come next month or in a couple of weeks. This is so stupid, bro. And don't even get me started with Mercedes Monet. You know what? Let's go in order real quick. So Edge had this match against Brody Lee. Which, by the way, why should anyone give a shit? Why? Why? Did you just see what Willow Nightingale in Sky Blue? Just a reminder, she took a thumbtack spot and a two by four on top of a table because why does that make any fucking sense when there's already barbed wire on top of the fucking table? I digress though. Who cares when you just have that fucking random stupid ass match on fucking Rampage? Now you want me to fucking what? Get invested into a match that won't do one third of the fucking match? You had Edge and Brody Lee, and for some reason, because why the fuck not, Brody Lee's bleeding because that's the story of the match, right? Just go ahead. Keep keep, keep undercutting the Edge and Aleister Black match is going to happen coming up at double. Keep going. Keep, please, why not? You already fucked it up as is, right? Why not just keep undercutting it, right? You already undercut this match with having that stupid match on fucking Rampage. Now you're going to have them bleed, taking away another tool that Edge and fucking Aleister Black could have probably used for their match. Just unbelievable bruh you wanted me to really get invested into this you really wanted me to get invested into this i couldn't not knowing that that fucking match took place not knowing that hey there's an actual main event coming on after this right here this is just the last match but this isn't the last segment of the night so i'm more so curious as to what's gonna happen in that main event which i already spoiled for you guys but let's continue on because edge ended up beating Brody lee and then who came out Kyle fucking Fletcher, or whatever the fuck his name is, Kyle O'Reilly, Kyle Fletcher, aren't they the same person who gives a shit? They're gonna have a match in the Cope Open, emphasis on fucking Cope, for the T and all this for the TBS TNT Championship? Really? 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 
You can just have a standard one-on-one -on -one match with Edge and Brody King because again, just completely keep abusing the fucking stipulation and no disqualification. Keep abusing the blood and keep having these random fucking things happen for no fucking reason whatsoever. And then, and then, <laughs> bro. So actually, let me stop for a second. Because that I'm not gonna get to the main segment yet. Again, you already heard me spoil it with Brian with Brian Danielson and and Eddie Kingston being the guys who were the fucking people revealed. But before I ran about that a little bit longer, we get Mercedes Mona. And mind you, they're scared. They're trying to crunch all this shit into one spot. They're really, really trying to crunch this into, into one set. They have like fucking eight minutes left. And they have this promo with Mercedes Mona. And they're trying to fucking start the best to slam in this fucking main event spot. with Bro. This is what happens when you dedicate so much time to the matches that fucking no one gives a shit about. No one gave a shit about Jay, Ru Jay Uso, Jay, whatever his name is, going up against Rocky Balboa. No one gave a shit about that. No, you should have not blown off Orange Cassidy, and or at least even given a fucking taste of Orange Cassidy and Tremperetta. And even if it is a lower card feud, you, you could have cut that, you could have had a promo, you could have done whatever you wanted to do. You had a fucking match between them. You put Mercedes, what's her name, fucking Mariah May in a match against someone I can't even fucking remember what she went up against. That's how fucking, it was just so much irrelevant shit that went on in this, where it would have probably been a lot more plausible to give more time to the main event. Maybe give him more time to actually have the fucking guys in the main event promo cut an actual fucking promo to get us at least somewhat somewhat excited for the build up for these two irrelevant fucking motherfuckers. I love Brian Danielson. We'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, Mercedes Monet cut a promo also. A stupid fucking promo that had no consequences to it whatsoever. It's nice that she's now looking more like Sasha Banks than she was beforehand. But it's just what 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 are we doing here? What are we doing here? What are she's so fucking cringe? You have the people in the audience going shut the fuck. Up, and I was right along with them. You're right. Shut the fuck up. You cringy, cringy, cringy. She's so bad at this, bro. I don't give a shit if she is one of the best women's wrestlers in the fucking planet. I don't know who gave her that fucking title, but I'll say that she's one of the biggest names in women's wrestling. Can I do that? I think that's an appropriate title to give her, right? I mean, what the fuck? She is making some of the biggest money in professional wrestling for a woman. Leave it up to the mark known as Tony Khan, right? fucking releasing talent in order to fucking pay Mercedes Monet to come out with this shitty ass fucking promo. Talk about, oh, I can't wait to see you at Double or Nothing and I'm going to win my champion. Shut the fuck up. And then that brings us to the climax. That brings us to the main event. That brings us to the fucking pinnacle of what the fuck we're seeing tonight for professional wrestling. What this all built up to, baby. You had the fucking Young Bucks come out with Kazushika Okada, aka Gotenks. <sighs> fucking jungle jack oh my god my dad's dead perry they come out to the fucking rank and oh my god this is so stupid bro they had like five if that i, I if, if maybe it was five minutes i can't even remember it was so short so sudden they call out ft i don't know if they call out ftr they come out to the ring and ftr is like okay guys so here's the people that we found and here i'm thinking to myself okay well this is the main event segment hopefully it's gonna be something compelling like i said it's brian fucking danielson and it's fucking eddie kendrick's like, oh, come on, bro. Are we fucking serious right now? Really, Brian Danielson and Eddie Kendricks? You really want me to fucking see a goat and a member of the Temptations? By the way, you dig the song? I know you guys did the background music. I guess some dick on your balls, man. I'm making you into grown men tonight. Oh, yes, I am. Papa was a Rolling Stone. Wherever he laid his hat was his home. And when he died, oh, boy, Christian Cage, he was alone. But regardless, though, just... This was just stupid. All this build up for this. We asked for overrun time to let you guys know that we're going to have two people already on the roster that we've been seeing for weeks on Team AEW. I don't even know. And they're calling them Team AEW as opposed to what? Are you guys Team AEW? I mean, you're the managerial guys. Aren't you Team AEW? What the fuck are we doing here, bro? What the fuck are we doing here? This was dumb. All this was dumb. All this was a waste of time. I did not like tonight's show. The matches were pointless as fuck. Why the fuck do I give a shit about Edge and fucking Brody King when they already have a match twice as good with twice as many weapons on fucking Rampage? Why the fuck do I care about any of these angles where you keep undercutting every single thing? Swerve Strickland is irrelevant as shit as the world champion. Apparently, fucking Tony Storm is taking a backseat to Mercedes Monet. We have this anarchy in the arena match building off of the shit that happened last week. Oh, wait, no. We didn't touch on any of the shit that happened last week. Kenny Omega just shows up in the hospital and he's like, hey guys, I'm fucking dead because someone fucked me in the asshole and I got a shit out of a fucking Kazamatomi bat. Hoosa, 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 hoosa. I'm just gonna let you guys know you didn't miss anything. 
If you want to know more about the show, just rewind this because I'm probably more entertaining than what happened tonight. And that's not me patting myself on the back. That's me speaking the ungodly fucking truth. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Man, fucking boy, oh boy. Oh, man, people are going to run. People, I know people are going to run defense for this because we had good wrestling tonight. Oh, people are going to run defense for the show. Oh, professional wrestling. Oh, professional wrestling. I knew thee well. I knew thee well. Rest in peace, professional fucking wrestling. God almighty, I can't wait to see the viewing show number for tomorrow. It should be exciting, especially after seeing the card for tonight, right? But what's the excuse going to be tomorrow, right? What's the excuse, Melter? Let me know right now, huh? Let me know right now what, what's going to be the excuse. Oh, all the talents had to shit their pants, and they had to hold in their shit, so they had to go on the ring, and they couldn't fully compare. They, 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 they couldn't fully invest in their magic because all of them had to hold in their shit. Diarrhea squirting all over the pants. Oh, boy, oh, boy. No, it's good. Whatever, bro. Whatever. We'll be back tomorrow, and we'll talk about the ratings tomorrow. And then we'll say we'll try our best to try to recoup ourselves because our souls just been defeated by this fucking show. As always, my name is Devonte, and I'll be catching you guys later. Deuces, P, Ice. I'm gonna go skibbity myself in Minecraft. Be right back.